kind of went from, you know, being maybe not in the public eye, like what was your first kind of relationship to fame when you were like, was it at an airport, you know, walking down the street when you were like, whoa, like people know who I am? Because that's always an interesting thing, I think, you know, because you're well, doing the work, but now people know who you are. Well, I don't remember that when that first happened, but I know that when I did The Detective, there was so much publicity about M Mia Farrow, who was married to Sinatra at the time, not being able to leave the Polanski movie she was doing to join the film, which she was protected. And I got the part. I was didn't didn't know about the film. I didn't know anything about it. And I was under contract to Fox and I so the studios and I they called me and said they wanted me to do it. And I'm like, why? What? Who? Who's in it? And Sinatra, I couldn't believe it. And, it used, and I had to get ready in within about nine days. And we had to do the hair and the makeup and get it organized. And they wanted me to look like Mia Farrow a little bit. So I had a very short wig made and it had to be perfect because they said, if it's not perfect, he'll get upset. There was a lot of pressure. And then I did the film and it went well. And I went back to London for Christmas. And when I went back to London, there was a lot of press. Suddenly it was like, she replaced Mia Farrow, da di da di da and all the gossip and all that stuff. And I thought, hmm, well, this is quite fun for a day or two, but it's not fun to have no time left to do anything else. And I said, I wonder if, if this is like, is this what it is like to be famous? <laughs> and thank goodness it wasn't. I mean, it could be, it could have been if I'd gone, you know, I didn't, I just picked and should. I picked, I didn't let it overtake me. There've been moments when I was a bit overtaken, but um, not really. I'm pretty grounded. That's good. I mean, some people it overtakes them, right? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, when people think of, you know, Jacqueline Bissett, you know, it really depends on the decade that you kind of came to age. For me, my first memories were class, which shows you kind of approximately how old I am. But do you have vivid memories of that, of working with like with Rob Lowe and Andrew McCarthy on class? Oh, well, I do. I do remember. But I, I was just talk, doing another interview and telling them about how how things can change in a shoot, because in that story, I was married to Chris Robertson, Cliff Robertson. Right, he was supposed to be kind of a bad guy and not a good husband, and I was running away basically from him. That was my my story point was that I was looking to find something, so that's why I was in that bar when I met Andrew McCarthy, and I got involved with him. But actually, the audience, from the audience point of view, it was partly because my husband was just not a not he was a beast, and and not nice to me, and I ended up in a psychiatric um, hospital at the end of the film. That was the first script, which is what I had gone off when I started the film. Now, then when they did the film, they decided to go for the comedy of it, which was obviously still there. It was there the same as before, but the ending was gone. And so it was so, so suddenly now I'm like a woman on the on the make. Picking up a guy and I look like the bimbo of the world, you know, which worked and it was comedically it worked. It wasn't exactly what I wanted, but it was the way the producer you never know what's going to happen. Once they've got the film on you, they can do what they want with it, pretty much. So I was a lesson in, and I was upset with the ad campaign, but you know, nothing serious. What upset you about the ad campaign? Oh, it was a picture of a woman with a, half her bosom uh, out and sitting between the two men, in, um, Andrew and Rob. Rob. And, uh, and I'm there with a very cut, low cut dress and with my knees crossed and looking very tarty. And I thought, Ugh, what kind of a cheap ad is that? You know, little did I know that about 50 years, 40 years later, I don't know, 30 years later, I met the person who was the, who had posed as me in the picture. And she said, you know, I've got to tell you something. I said, what? She said, I'm the girl in the picture between the two of you and on class. I said, you are the girl in the picture. I can't believe it. She said, yes, they asked me to come and do the job, but they didn't want to see my head. I said, what do you mean they didn't want to see your head? They said they just wanted my body and me in the middle. And she wondered why they didn't photograph her head, because actually they were going to put my head on her. <laughs> so there I am with my um, bosom sort of looking very busty. And it was her bosom and, and my head on her bosom and body. And there I was between the two guys and looking pretty tacky. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, uh, you know, there you go. Once again, you never know how things end up. You never know how things are going to end up. No, well, you don't. 
early on in your career, you know, you were nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Newcomer. You know, that was pretty early in your career. Like, does that, like, did that kind of change things? And does that ever get old? I had no idea. I didn't know it had happened. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what a newcomer was. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know about the Golden Globes. I just, it went right over my head. I didn't pay it any attention. It meant nothing to me at all, whatsoever. Later on, I look back and I said, oh, I was nominated. I was nominated. Oh, that was, must have been good. I guess I was okay in that first film. But did, uh, right, um, I didn't have a PR person. I didn't, I wasn't interested in any of it. I just wanted to work. Wow. So it just, it was, it came and it went and it never really it was a thing. And nobody even mentioned it. But to me, no. Wow. But I didn't understand the whole structure of any of it in Hollywood. I didn't know about awards. Didn't know about, didn't know about acting either. I was just a green creature, a green young creature, enthusiastic to become an actor. But I, yeah. I didn't so, know anybody in business either. So in a way, maybe opposite of your character and a little bit from Lauren and Rose, you know, they made the, the mention that she never won an Academy Award and she wanted to, and that's still a thing. Like, where are you in that? Like, do I mean, you've been nominated for so many things. Like, do you want that Oscar? I mean, this role is getting such, you if know. You've done, if, you've done, if you've done really great work and, and it gets recognized, of course, it's meaningful. Yes, it is meaningful. But it's all about the world. But, it's all, but all these things are getting very peculiar. I mean, it's all becoming very much politically correct. All the rules now, it's all changing. And I don't know what I think about it. It is changing, right? I mean, and it's kind of overwhelming with it's all a, the new no, rules. Yes. It, it is. And then the new rules do not allow, you can't cast people in the role that you want person you want if they're not the right race but you, it's got to, it's complicated it's become it's become unreal and it you know obviously as an actor you want the freedom to play anything you want to play you don't want to be told i don't really quite i think it's going i think what's happening in many things is very are very good but i i think being fair about eth different ethnicities is certainly part of Amer the american image or the what the, the represents the population so that's all good but when, to say to a filmmaker or somebody who creatively wants to make a story, you cannot use that actor because they're not the right color. Um, I find that absurd because in the theater, obviously people seek to, to, to play all the parts they can as various as they can. You really feel like the best actor or actress is the one that should get the part. I think the point you're trying to you know, is a mixture of things. There's the economics of it. You've got to cast somebody who you can get your financing on. So generally, there's a degree of financing that comes with bigger stars who, who, are, who are known around the world. I mean, there's a logic to it. It's not just in a vacuum. It's a lot. There's logical. We will get each country says we'll put up X amount of dollars to get that be interested in that movie with those with that cast. We don't 